So now time for some social media posts. This was posted in a messy Facebook group. She says, so I'm about to come into a bit of money and the guy I've been seeing for six months either expects me to buy us a house or buy an investment and then move in with him. When I brought up again, because I was somewhat confused, it started the, you are better off than me. I'll never buy a house saga. Now, that is fine. However, I don't value someone for their monetary worth. But now that I look past my rose-colored glasses, I get the inclination that maybe this dude is using me. Maybe I'm way out of line for even thinking that, but I can't help the thought now that it's passed through my head. It's also raised a number of red flags that I'm not sure how I missed these. Red flag one, finishing in me when I asked him not to. That right there should have been enough to walk away. Number two, drinking and driving. That on its own should have been enough. Number three, saying over and over that money's not mine. That's your money. I don't want it. I didn't mention my money being his. It just randomly comes out as an outburst. I also don't even have the money and have no idea how much I'll be getting. So I haven't thought about it. I'll do um, what I'll do with it. He has though. Number four, saying he won't be able to buy a house without me that he is financially ruined, but also he expects us to live together. He expects this woman to live with a financially ruined man. So that's number five. Number five, trying to convince me to move in with him now after telling me I'm not ready for that. Number six, visibly drunk and stumbling, but said he only had five beers all day. Okay. <laughs> the guy was sloshed. What number am I on? Is this seven? Not going to work, not sick, nothing. Just not going, but using my kid's sickness as the excuse. My kids aren't even sick anymore. We also don't live together, so my kids are solely my responsibility. I've not asked him to care for my kids. Thoughts. If you tell me to leave, I'm going to need some ideas how, because I already tried, and he's a sticky dude. He didn't let it happen. I don't know why he needs to let it happen. He doesn't live with you, so close the door. Um, do what you need to do. Alert the authorities. There are so These red flags should have all been non-starters. All of these red flags are so red that this should have caused Moses to come out and try to part them. That's how bad these red flags are. What are you getting positive out of dealing with a man who drinks and drives, who is financially ruined, who can't go, who is not working at all? Like, what is the positive of keeping a human being around that's like this? Okay, so the woman who sent me this says, and yeah, everyone's warning her. This story had like over 500 comments. And I was like, cool, let me know when there's an update. An update, I have written a note returned a couple of belongings that were in my home and left them at his door. Thank you all. I appreciate every single one of you. And someone said to her, anonymous member, you go girl, wisest decision for you and your kids. Ladies, please don't have these parasites around your children. Anonymous member, make sure to block him. He will keep trying if you don't. Um, this person says, please be strong and resist his poor me crying, anger, and whatever else he thinks of. You deserve way, way better. This person is everything all good. And then the anonymous member says, he hasn't seen the note yet. Thank you for checking in. He isn't aggressive at all, but is going to be livid. If he if it gets heated, I will just blockity block block. She should just blockity block block regardless. Now we're going to segue into this Christian nationalist pastor named Joel Whedon, and he is going to talk about the key characteristic of the LGBT community. I'm just going to let his words speak for themselves. You think of the LGBT community, it's like, well, they're marked by compassion, or they're marked by artistic expression, or they're marked by... Well, don't forget the key characteristic. The key characteristic of the gay community is, uh, is butt sex. That's the key characteristic. It's yep. feces. That's the key characteristic. It's AIDS. It's disease. Yep. And it needs to be said because yep. nobody has said it for a very long time because we're all scared. Um, I, I don't particularly want to put my neck out there. You know, right wing watch is probably going to have a field day with this. Some of the comments, Keith says, the only people I've ever known who are so concerned about what other people do in the privacy of their own bedrooms are those who simply cannot confront 
the truth of what they want to do in the privacy of their own bedroom because it frightens them. And it is Pride Month. You Love is love. Love who you want and how you want. Um, this person says, Joel, later that evening, as he is eating cake, or we'll just say cake. Major high tide down here, he says, it does seem odd that all these straight Christian ultra-nationalist traders are experts on um, uh, Snooky from the back. <laughs> I'll just say that. I wonder how many hours a week they spend researching this particular topic since they go on and on and on about it. <laughs> Brian says, I really appreciate how dedicated this account is to sourcing such excellent material for us to view and share. <laughs> Spark After Dark says, do they have a room full of Matt Walsh clones that, they slow, that they're slowly drip feeding into the media space? Um, Ella Hugh Who says, all lesbians are into loving from the bunghole type of nookie. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, I'm not an expert on these things, but y'all needed to see that video. Finally, a post from Sun M. Show. So he posts this man who is making fun of Angel Reese. This man who um, Sun created a side-by-side -side and said that he resembles E.T. had some words for Reese Angel. Um, but let's take some time to really appreciate this artwork. This is literally like you can tell that Sun really worked hard to create this masterpiece. You can tell. But this is what Ryan had to say about Angel Reese taking her next selfie for the gram. Obviously disrespectful. I don't know why these people just jump up on the internet and have to act like this daily, especially whilst looking like he looks. Some of the commentary, um, visiting Emily Clark style says, he looks like we need to hide women and children from him. This person at the bottom says, I may have my Delulu moments, but I pray I never become as delusional as a below average white man on Twitter. The people on Twitter, these men on Twitter are a different breed. Tell God from the group home says, here he is. Um, this person says, them liver spots on his face definitely is a reason not to use I'm dead. <laughs> right here is where he said, I'm dead, when he did the retweet. We'll end this one with a big picture of his face and Casey saying, hairline running away from your face and you have the nerve. I mean, sir, looking like this, calling out somebody else's looks, read the room, buddy. It is very, very important that we highlight what they look like. We have to shine a mirror at their faces because there is a scarcity of mirrors, unfortunately. It is a nationwide phenomenon. It might even be a global phenomenon where many of these men, they do not have mirrors. And it is causing them to be delusional where they believe that they should be able to talk about women's looks. That's the reason why you have got to show a selfie of what they look like and then you need to highlight their looks in words and tell them what they really look like because they have too much nerve and they need to be brought down 17 pegs. It's that, that's the number. Their pegs are way too high. Pull them down. Shine the, shine the light on them and put the mirror in their face. That's what you got to do. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about these. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.